good Tuesday morning. Inspiration for today, family. Wasn't yesterday touching? I hope you got to see our Memorial Day tribute to those who have given their life for our freedom. Uh, if not, I encourage you to go back on YouTube and take a look at it. It touched my heart. It touched my heart. But today, we are going to get back to our study through the book of Colossians. Now, just to refresh your mind, or if you haven't been with us, just to let you know, this is a church that Paul has not had the opportunity to visit at this point. He is in a Roman prison writing letters, and he writes to this church wanting, and the reason we're studying Colossians is it's in a very, just four chapters, four short chapters, we get the uh, full theology about who Jesus was, is, everything about him, and how to live our lives in a short book. So that's what we're doing. So I hope you can be with us, stay with us. By the way, if you have your Bible, I always encourage you to look up these verses as we're studying. I'm reading it mostly uh, in the New International Version. Here's a little trick, by the way, if you've not heard it before, because sometimes it's hard to find these books when they're so maybe three or four pages long is all in your Bible. And, I, and to remember the order, it's go eat popcorn. <laughs> go eat popcorn. Yes, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. So if you hit any of those books, then you know in that order, you this is how you can remember the order. Go eat popcorn. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. That's just a little tip. <laughs> But in our study through Colossians, we, we are in chapter 2 right now, and we're at verse 6. Let me read that paragraph. Ah, oh, there is such freeing truth today for you and me. It's going to be a great day. If we can just get this in from our heart to, from our mind to our heart. Verse 6. And he has, Paul has been writing about the greatness of Christ, the fullness, well, in ver the, the kind of the, the verse, chapter 1, verse 15, he says, Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. He then goes on to expand on that for some period of time. Because that's such an amazing truth, is it not? That God himself dwelt in the person of Jesus Christ. He was God. That's big, big, that God would love us enough to do that, is it not? Verse 6 of chapter 2. So then, with all that in mind, and much more if you want to read it, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, Continue to live in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Wow, what a paragraph, what a paragraph, is it not? Now, when he says, so then just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, how did you do that? How do you do that? If you're talking, to someone about Jesus. What do you tell them? You receive Christ by faith. It's by placing your faith in him and these truths that we've been talking about. That Jesus, that, that you are a sinner and that you, that you had to have those sins forgiven for you to live with a holy and just God. And you couldn't ever do that on your own. So Jesus died for you. And then you placed your faith. Ephesians 2, for by God's grace, we are saved through faith. Jesus is Lord. And so Paul tells these 
this church, his brothers and sisters in Christ, continue in him. Continue in him. Just as you were saved by faith, you should be living by faith. And he goes, and he makes that clear, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in all the faith as you were taught. So we're to live. It's not just a saving faith. It's a faith. It's a faith in the, as we live. That Jesus is our Savior, and He's going to see us through the good times and the bad. Not that He's like a genie and will does you know remove all bad things from our life. We live in a fallen world. Sad as that is, better times are ahead for those who are following Jesus by faith because we have heaven to look forward to where everything is made right and we live not in a sinful world, but right now we do. But I, when, it's, when, when Paul is saying, rooted and built up and strengthened in the faith, our faith is not static. When a person displaces their faith in Christ, he is a new creation, says. But he's not mature in his faith. He has a lot of growing to do, but you live by faith. Now, how do you know? There's lots of ways you can know if you're growing in your faith. Honestly, by making the effort to, to either get up and watch the show live or record it and watch it later or, or watch it on YouTube. Just by making this, this is a little step. But it's a step in growing in your faith. How do, how do you know, though, if you're growing in your faith? Look at the end of that. And overflowing with thankfulness. The person growing in their faith is growing in their thankfulness. Recognizing where all the good things come from. They come from the Lord, our God. He blesses us and we thank him for it. Verse 8. He goes on, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the basic principles of this world rather than on Christ. The world would love to just tell you that you can do everything yourself. You don't need a God. If you try hard enough, how many times do you hear that? I just encourage everyone not give up because you can do anything if you try hard enough. Have you heard that? <laughs> 10 times today? No, uh, you hear it all the time, and it's not true. There's certain things it's not dependent on you. You are to work hard at what God has called you to do, of course. But he is the one who blesses us and blesses what the works of our hands. Or they'll tell you other lies. God is in you, they'll say. No, God is the creator. God. Verse 9, for in Christ all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form, and you have been given fullness in Christ who is the head over every power and authority. Once again, Paul makes it very clear that the fullness of God, Jesus was God. But the fullity, and you have been given fullness in Christ. What tense is that verb? Past. Because he's writing to followers of Christ. So they receive, you receive, the fullness of Christ. You have been given, you have been given full, the fullness of Christ in you at the time you believed. That means the Holy Spirit came to dwell in you. The third person of the Godhead. <laughs> This is exciting stuff. It's, it's life-changing if we can grasp it. We can. We can. Paul expands on this tomorrow. You and I need the lesson that we'll get tomorrow. Bye for now. Walk closely with him, and I'll see you tomorrow. And I won't worry about tomorrow. I'm trusting.